Congrats on getting your first 10 gallon aquarium. But with so many fish at the pet store, which ones are gonna look good and survive? Keep watching as I give you my top five beginner friendly ideas for stocking your 10 gallon aquarium. Hi, I'm Irene from Girl Talks Fish here with practical tips on nano fish and planted aquariums. And many beginners, especially if they're not starting with a bed of fish, usually go with 10 gallons as their first ever aquarium. So to help you succeed, I wanna give you five different setups that follow a couple rules. A, it's gotta have hardy beginner fish that you can readily get at your local pet store chain. And then B, I don't want you to add too many fish in because more fish equals more fish poo and very few people wanna clean their aquarium more than once a week. This list was kind of hard to develop because I wanted to give you tank mates that were, well, A, peaceful. So there's not gonna be bullying going on. They have to be roughly the same size so nobody will eat another fish. <laughs> they have to live in the same conditions. So the same water parameters, pH, temperature, that kind of thing. Also, I wanted them on the same diet so that you didn't have to feed different kinds of foods, but they also can't outcompete each other for food. And then finally, it'd be great if they all swam at different layers in the aquarium, as well as if they were different colors and shapes and different appearance, just so that they don't all blend in together and look exactly the same. Tank number one is a betta tank. And yes, you can actually keep betta fish with other community fish. Now, a caveat is some betta fish are just gonna be super aggressive. They're not gonna get along with anybody no matter what. However, in general, you can keep bettas with other peaceful fish as long as you give them plenty of room, lots of cover to hide behind, and of course, don't put them with other bettas or fish that look like bettas. I have a whole video over here on potential tank mates you can try. Betta fish grow to, I don't know, a little more than two inches long, not including the tail. They'll swim at all levels of the aquarium, but they especially like the top to take gulps of air. So make sure you have that tight aquarium lid so they won't take a jump out. And they come in many, many colors. So get whatever color you think would go best with albino cory catfish. There are many species of Corydoras, but I chose this one because they are one of the hardiest, most popular, and easy to breed types out there. They get to about like mm, two and a half inches long, and they're gonna be very peaceful and derpy, not afraid of your betta fish at all. I love them because they love to scavenge around the bottom of the aquarium for any pieces of food that fall past your betta fish and basically act as a great cleanup crew member. Now, they are a schooling fish, and in general, the more the merrier, right? The more schooling fish you have, the happier they feel, the more comfortable. So this is gonna be true for all of the schooling fish I have on this list, but basically, I'm gonna tell you to get the bare, bare minimum. So in this case, three to four albino corridors. And then I want you to test your water and see if each week when you do a water change, are you staying below 40 parts per million ppm of nitrates. If you don't know what nitrates are, you can watch this video over here on the nitrogen cycle, but it's basically a toxic waste compound that is produced from your fish's waste. And if there's a lot of it, they're not gonna do well. Now, if you find that each week you are below 40 ppm, go ahead and cautiously get a few more members of that school, and then they'll be happier with more friends to play with. Tank number two is going to be the Tetra tank. We're gonna mix a honey grommy with neon tetras. I love this tank because we're putting together different colors. We've got the bright yellow, the red and blue. We've got different body shapes, different sizes, as well as different swimming levels. It just all meshes together. The honey grommy is gonna be your centerpiece fish. So you're just gonna get one and they're about mm, two inches long, very bright sunshine yellow color. I love their very peaceful nature and very unique body shape in my opinion. You usually, well, supposedly they swim around the middle and top layers of the tank, but I find them all throughout. So if you want a full care guide on this cool species, check out the video I've made on Chris's channel, Fish for Thought. Neon tetras, on the other hand, they only get to about like an inch long, a very slender torpedo shaped fish with that bright red, bright blue horizontal stripe. You'll mostly find them swimming in the middle to bottom layers of the tank. Um, however, they are a schooling fish. So get about, let's start with six or seven of them and imagine that bright yellow fish in the midst of them with some green plants in the background. It's gonna look amazing. Tank number three is gonna be the live bear tank. We're talking about fish that bear live young. In this case, I think I wanna go with 
six endlers. So typically we want maybe like two males and four females, just so the males don't bug the females too much, as well as three nerite snails. So I picked endlers instead of guppies just because they're a little bit smaller and they come in many colors as well. I find them to be very active and entertaining without being too fast or aggressive for a community tank. They're gonna swim at all levels of the aquarium and I really like their curious personalities. I find that to be a very rare trait in nanofish like that. Nerite snails are a very small snail, usually I don't know, a little less than an inch, and they're gonna do a great job of cleaning your aquarium. So they like to eat any leftover food they see, as well as algae on your plants, decor, hardscape, and even the aquarium walls. I love them because unlike other snails, they're not gonna breed and overrun the tank. Although you may see little sesame seed looking eggs around the aquarium. Again, they're not gonna hatch. And then best of all, like the endlers, they come in tons of colors and patterns. Tank number four is the glowfish tank. Yes, I said glowfish. We're gonna get about five or six of the zebra danio type of glowfish, as well as a couple of a monoship. Now, if you saw my previous advice video for beginners, I mentioned that glowfish, for some reason, are just bulletproof, very hardy. And zebra danios in particular, I think they come about like two inches long, torpedo shaped. The colors include currently red, orange, purple, neon green and blue. Now they will swim in all levels of the tank and they are very fast with a hearty appetite. So they tend to outcompete slower fish when it comes to meal time. I decided to pair the Danios with a mono shrimp as a cleanup crew member because they're bigger and hardier in my opinion than cherry shrimp. The females get to about two inches long, which is about the same size. They come in like a clearish color, which isn't the most interesting, but compared to the rainbow glowfish you already have, it's not gonna matter as much. They are aggressive eaters as well, which we need in this tank, and they do a great job of picking out any tiny crumbs that fall in between the cracks, as well as algae in the aquarium. They don't breed in fresh water, so you're not gonna have to worry about them getting out of control. If you wanna learn more about the Amato shrimp, check out my care guide over here. Idea number five is the I'm sick of betta fish aquarium. Yes, I had a friend who told me she was sick of fish. She thought that betta fish were overrated. So for her, I would recommend a 10 gallon aquarium with mm, three African dwarf frogs, as well as let's say one to two large mystery snails. Let me explain. African dwarf frogs grow to about two inches and the normal color is a brown with spots or you can get the albino variety. You'll generally find them kind of laying on the ground and every once in a while they'll swim to the top to get a breath of air. They are social creatures, which, which is why we want three of them. And unfortunately they are a slower, pickier eater. So you can not feed them. They generally won't eat fish flakes. Instead, they prefer things like frozen foods or live foods. And they are messy eaters as well, which is why it's so important we get a cleanup crew member for them. That's where the mystery snail comes in. So they will get to two inches, sometimes more, depending on the variety. And that's good because the frogs will try to eat anything they can fit inside of their mouths. Unlike the frogs, they come in many, many colors. I've heard of gold, ivory, pink, purple, blue, crazy stuff like that. And then they'll only breed if you leave like a gap of dry land basically above the water surface. So they'll crawl up there, lay their eggs if you want them to. Definitely make sure you have a tight aquarium lid because they will crawl out if given a chance. In general, their job is to look pretty while eating up all the leftovers that your frog left behind. Now, if you wanna get into breeding fish in a 10 gallon aquarium, I have five really cool species that would be fun to try. Take time to enjoy your aquariums and I'll see you in the next video.